From movies to video games, the double-barreled shotgun is just plain cool. But in real life, owning a double-barreled shotgun can be pretty expensive. You're talking at least a few hundred dollars, and that's for the cheap model. And then there's the ammunition you have to keep feeding it, if you want to keep shooting it. So what to do if you've got a hankering for a double-barreled shotgun, but you don't feel like spending a whole ton of money? You get a toy double-barreled shotgun. And that brings us to today's episode, a review of a toy double-barreled shotgun. Hey there everybody, Mystery Toy Gunner here with you with this pseudo unboxing of this toy shotgun. I say pseudo unboxing because, well, obviously I've already unboxed it and to be honest, I've already started to play with it. <laughs> but I wanted to show you, you know, kind of what it what it is or what it looks like when it first comes to you. So I've disassembled the shotgun and tried to replicate kind of how it was when I first got it. Okay, without any further ado, let's get to it. This is the educational model S686 toy gun bullet bullet jumping toy foam blaster by Tissen. This one I got off of Amazon, but I'm pretty sure either this particular model or models very similar to it are available on other places, you know, like eBay or in certain cities, if you have like a local flea market that operates on the weekends, some of those vendors might actually have this as well. Anyway, so what do you get with it? Um, you get the shotgun and it comes in two parts. So you will have to assemble it. You've got the grip and you've got the receiver or the shotgun itself. It comes with a little bag with the parts you need to assemble it. It also comes with the screwdriver. It comes with, well, an optic. Uh, I'll go into detail about the optic later, but know that it does, it does come with one. It comes with some safety glasses. These are pretty small. Um, if you're an adult, these probably won't fit you comes with an arm bandolier. This is pretty cool. You just, you know, put it on your arm and you, you put the extra shells in here. That's pretty neat. Comes with, uh, well, mine came with 12 shells and a whole bunch of the darts. I have more, I have, I have more darts than actual shells. Uh, not that I'm complaining. I, I like having extra darts. It comes with the instruction manual, which is actually not very detailed, and it comes with a packing list, which is uh, actually incorrect in some ways. Um, the packing list does not say I should get this, uh, but I got the optic anyway. Um, it says I, uh, the bullet case, that's what it calls the shells. It says I should only have 10. And uh, I've got 12. Uh, not that I'm, again, not that I'm complaining, but uh, just pointing out some inaccuracies. Uh, it says I should have 40 of the, the bullets. That is correct. I've, I've got 40 of these. Anywho, uh, don't worry that the instructions are not well detailed. They, act, they actually leave out um, uh, how to install one part. But don't worry, I'll guide you through it. Okay, here we go. Assembling the shotgun is actually pretty easy. The little baggie will have the screwdriver. Uh, it'll come with uh, these little screws and little nuts. Mine did not come with too many spares, so be careful. Don't lose any of these, all right? All right, first, install, installing the grip is actually pretty easy. It actually just slips right on, but obviously you're going to want to secure it. So. One side of the grip, hopefully you can see, has an indentation in the shape of one of the hex nuts. So what you're gonna do is just insert one of the hex nuts in there. It should be tight enough that it should stay 
but just keep an eye on it in case it does fall out. Then just slip the grip over the receiver, AKA the shotgun. Whoops. All right, I like, uh, okay, see, the release lever is right back here, so that's why the front keeps opening up, but that's okay. Now, just to be sure, maybe you'll want to keep a finger over that one hex nut while you put the screw through the other end. And of course, now it's giving me trouble. I don't know why. There we go. It'll slip, should slip right in. And then you just tighten it down. Okay, it's getting there. <laughs> you might have to push in on that hex nut a little bit just so the screw can get into contact with it. And of course, I'm struggling now that the camera is on. It's really not this difficult, people. Just make sure that is in there. There we go, now I feel it grabbing. Nope, <laughs> what is going on here? All right, hang on, let me, let me start over. Great, now it's not coming out. Okay, take two, I removed that one hex nut and replaced it with the other one that was in the bag. Maybe that one was just out of spec, I don't know. Yeah, th this one's grabbing. So, so hey, one thing to keep in mind, maybe one of the spare hex nuts is just a bit out of spec and won't tighten down. But this one did tighten down, it's nice and tight. You don't have to make it farm tractor tight, you know, just snug it down. There we go. And now you have to assemble the, uh, the pump. So what's going to happen is, as, uh, without this pump connected, okay, when you break open the shotgun, it's not going to push on the pump, and you're actually not activating the gun, or not, not cocking it, all right? So you literally just have to take this, and make sure that piece connects right there. And then you're gonna take this little bracket and just snug it down in place. Using these two screws. Okay, now keep in mind, um, when tightening this down, you're tightening it into that, what, what looks like to be a metal hex nut. These, however, you're just literally screwing into the plastic. So don't go too tight here. Just snug it down, but don't go too tight or else you're gonna strip out the plastic. And while there are ways to fix that, it's better not to strip out the, the plastic in the first place. So that's it for assembly to test it out. You hit this little lever here to break it open and you'll you'll feel the tension of that cocking lever all right so it'll take you a little bit of force hear that click that's how you know the uh, internal uh, piston or whatever air driver they used is now reset the trigger is active and then it's ready to go okay let's talk about the very cheap optic. <laughs> I mean, this is not a very expensive toy. I think I think I paid uh, like 35 something around there dollars for the whole thing. So, yeah, don't expect a high quality optic. It comes with a little tab. 
pull that out and then this part here which is usually the battery door on it on a real optic this is your on and off okay it's not a real red dot i don't know if you can see but the uh, uh the reticle is actually etched onto the plastic in a real optic this is called the glass that's what i will refer to the glass but it is made out of plastic all right so the reticle is etched right on the glass and turning the optic on simply activates a tiny little looks like a little uh led and it just lights up the reticle again the reticle is already on the glass <laughs> you can see it uh but if you want a little bit more light ding and that's all it is it's it just projects a beam upwards onto the reticle it is not adjustable all right uh so there's no way to adjust your point of aim uh this thing here on a real optic would probably allow you to change the size of the reticle can't do that um yeah it's real basic it's just on or off and again it's just a light to light up <laughs> an etched reticle to install it you just loosen this thing here to loosen up this bracket and then you install it onto the the rail up here so just make sure that you line up well, actually all right it doesn't even have a recoil lug so <laughs> you can i'm guessing you can just slide this up and down on there let me test my theory yep since there is no recoil lug because it's a toy there is no recoil there is no recoil lug these little spaces mean nothing <laughs> okay you can literally just mount it anywhere all right so yeah when you tighten it down just remember the only thing keeping it in place is how tight you put it on there because there is no recoil lug there is no tab to keep it in place so just be careful because this is plastic on plastic obviously if you're going to use this you want it tight enough so it doesn't move but you don't want it too tight or you'll probably crack the bracket all right let's take a look at the ammunition so to speak you've got the shells and the darts to load it up you're just going to shove a dart into the shell make sure the suction cup is pointing out load it like that and it's ready to go let's talk about the darts for a moment do the suction cups work well yes and no <laughs> it depends on the surface so on a really smooth surface here's an old cell phone the glass is very smooth and yes the dart will stick to a very very smooth surface but it really does have to be that smooth so let me get something else here here's a piece of pretty smooth wood wooden board it is pretty smooth if i run my finger over here i'm not i'm not, I'm not going to get any splinters so it is smooth but not smooth enough for the suction cup to stick again if it's something real smooth like glass yeah it'll work but yeah it won't stick to probably a majority of surfaces out there okay rem remember that bandolier i showed you earlier well time to make good use of it let's put the shells in here as I fumble around for a bit there we go whoops went a little too far there there we go then just put this on your wrist and there you go you got your ammo right there I'll load these into the shotgun I'll have, I'll have four in reserve let's hit the range okay here we go i'm at my super secret shooting range 
And uh, forgive my awkwardness here. Let me tell you, first person in a video game, pretty easy. First person in real life, uh, actually kind of awkward because this camera is not my eye. It's literally the camera that I have to look through. <laughs> so I'm looking through my eye and then through the camera's eye. Anyway, all right, here we go. You push this button to break it open. Fold it back until you hit that click. Load the shells in. You know they're seated when it gives you that nice little click. That actually feels really nice. That is a satisfying click when you, uh, when you put them in there. And then just close it up. Distance from me to that door is eh, roughly 15 feet. Okay, if you pull the trigger slowly, you can fire the barrels uh, consecutively. But as I'm about to show you, if you pull the trigger real quick, you'll fire them in quick succession. So it looks like both barrels are firing at once, but it's really just one quickly after the other. Now, here's the cool part. When you break it open, check, check out what happens to the spent shells. Yeah, it's an auto ejector. How cool is that? That is... As simple as that is, that is incredibly satisfying. All right, here we go. Shove two more in, push it in until they click. Load it up, here we go. We're gonna try both barrels. And again, it's just both barrels in quick succession, but do it quickly enough, it looks like it's simultaneous. All right, here we go. <laughs> that is just so cool. All right, last salvo here. This is my boomstick. Yeah, how cool is that? Low Production Values Cinema presents The Mystery Toy Gunner versus Zombies of Death. All right, zombies, you've just entered the wrong house. Actually, uh, <laughs> In case of zombie invasion or, or impending zombie invasion, you should probably have your shotgun, you know, preloaded. Anywho, all right, let's take the one on the left. Yeah. I should have the doom music playing or something. <laughs> Almost missed. <laughs> One more. Yeah. Clean sweep. Okay, just some final thoughts here before I give this toy double barrel shotgun a rating. Some things I like and don't like about this shotgun. Uh, let's start with the things I don't like. Uh, the front latch, in my opinion, could be uh, a little more robust. It just feels a tad bit flimsy, you know. It doesn't really... I think there should be a harder click into place. It, sh it sh should feel um, a lot sturdier. If there's going to be a failure point in this toy, I think that's going to be it right there. I mean, it works, all right? It does seat positively, but I just think it should be a stronger latching point. Another knock against this shotgun is the fact that you have to put it together. Maybe that doesn't sound so bad in and of itself, but as you saw when I put it back together, um, it used some pretty small parts. That could be a problem if the intended user is a younger child. 
Now, if it's an older child or an adult or what passes for an adult, maybe that's not a concern, <laughs> but for smaller kids, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna put this together yourself before handing it off to the child. Also keep in mind uh, the price point, the intended market, and the competition. So I paid, I paid $38 and some change for this. Um, in that price range, when you look at uh, competitive products like from Nerf, you don't see Nerf guns in that price range that need to be assembled using very small parts. So yeah, that's going to be uh, another knock against this gun. The tactical rail just seems kind of weird on this. It'd be nice if it was detachable. And this is, I guess this is more of a nitpick. It doesn't take away too much from the overall design. It still looks like a, uh, you know, still looks cool as, as a double barrel, but yeah, the tactical rail just seems a, a bit out of place. Would have been nice if it was removable. Also, I mean, really? Did we really need this to be in the package? It'd be nice if they just did not include this and maybe shaved a couple more bucks off the price or did not include this and, and just gave us more shells or something, you know? Um, and by deleting the tack rail and, and this thing, maybe they could put that money towards, I don't know, engineering a stronger uh, front latch. Okay, let's go on to things that I do like about this shotgun. Obviously, I love the break open design. That feels very satisfying when you break it open and fully cock it, makes a, makes a nice sound, also a nice feel to it. I love the tactile feel of loading in the shells. I know that seems like such a s simple thing, but it really does feel really good. It's just this mechanically feels right. You see them in there, they click into place, makes a nice sound. I wish that latching was a bit stronger. You know, I wish that made, I wish that made a nice, nice mechanical hard, you know, click when it latches. Anyway, I went over that before. Uh, back to the positive things. Um, the trigger feels pretty nice. I like the fact that you can fire sequentially if you pull it slow. Oops, <laughs> went, went a little too quick there. It, it is kind of tricky sometimes, it's weird. Sometimes it's easy to go sequential and sometimes it's kind of a hair trigger. Anyway, if you take it easy, you can fire sequential and obviously if you pull the trigger fast, uh, it'll fire uh, both barrels. Anyway, uh, the other nice thing, of course, yeah, the fact that it, ejects the shells and the ejection is pretty strong so that's pretty cool overall i do think this is a pretty good toy shotgun for the money maybe a little on the pricier side of things i paid 38 bucks and some change but you know what that brake action yeah that, that that's worth the price of admission especially with the auto ejecting shells so my final score 3.5 out of 5 stars if you liked what you saw, hey, give me a like, give me a subscribe, share this video with your friends. You take care out there. I'll catch you next time.